Today I'm going to teach you how to install your deck boards. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of wood you're using, they all have the same problem. None of it's straight. So I got a bunch of tips and tricks to share with you to help make your life easy. So today is deck day. Last night we put all of our lumber on our deck just to store it. Um, leaving it on the ground is not a good idea because it's really, really long. And so if you put it on your deck, which should be level, it'll help keep your board straight and they won't twist overnight. So we're going to restack the pile now real quick so we can start laying it. And the idea here is we want to start with the finish of the deck. Don't start at the house, folks. Always start where your deck finishes. This will enable you to get a perfect measurement for your overhang. You can take into account what kind of skirting system you're going to use. And there are a few that would work for you, so we'll go through those options. And then you want to pull out your jigsaw and cut around your post, get everything nice and snug and pretty. And then we'll get going. Um, really important to have a straight line when you start. Really, really important to make sure when you order your decking boards, grab a few extra. You're always going to be disappointed when they deliver. There's always going to be a couple in there you just want to throw in the garbage. And we'll show you a tip and a trick and what to do with the wood after you're done. It involves the handrail and shorter pieces. So even the big crazy warp pieces will be useful later on. So we got to sort your wood. But for now, let's get moving it. We'll move a couple boards at a time and that'll help us to sort out the really bad ones right away. My system for installing your five quarter deck boards is as follows. One, take your load and start laying it out. And you'll quickly identify boards that have got a bad warp to them. I call it the hockey stick collection and they're all over here, okay? Now, when you take a look at what I'm doing here, you can see real quickly that I've got probably three or four boards there that I can use. Um, they're only half length, that's really simple. I've got handrail sections here that I can use out of that lumber as well. So I don't wanna be installing that in the deck, especially in the early part because I don't like to fight with those boards if it's not necessary. If I have to force a couple of them in, which we will, just by the number here I can tell, I've got probably two or three that I'm gonna have to force in, then that's fine. But I wanna identify the straightest lumber that I have just by putting them down together. And when you lay it all out, most of these boards that are here now are in pretty good shape as far as being straight. That's where we gotta start. Now, once we get straight, we also wanna take a look at the crown. Crowning on a deck board can be really awkward, especially when they're 16 feet long. Oh, rule number one, when you're working with this stuff, every time you see a sticker, get rid of it. Nothing worse than being done and seeing stickers sticking out of your deck. Anyway, you're gonna see that all of the wood has got a grain in it, okay? So what you want is you take a look at the grain. It's like a bowl in a lot of cases, and that bowl is gonna start like this and it'll curl over time. So what you want to do is you want to have the crown up, which is the top of the rainbow facing up, so that it's like this instead, okay? While that's drying, it'll be trying to dry ends down, which are already screwed in place. So then the board stays flat. If you leave it the other way, it'll be fighting and drying and trying to lift your screws. You run the risk of these things kind of coming loose over time, and you get this cupping effect. It's not very nice to walk on. So, Crown up. Now we take a look at this wood. It's in pretty decent shape. Just gonna do a visual inspection. I'm looking for chunks that are missing, rough surfaces, um, knots that have come loose and fallen out. But I think that board's in good shape. So here we are. I'm happy with that one. It's nice and tight, nice and straight. This little bit of rubbing is just dirt, and that'll come off at the very end when we give it a quick light sand. And now I'm also looking for my second best board, and that's going to go on the nosing. So it also has to be perfectly straight. We also want to see what kind of condition this board is in, and we're good. And if your board is longer than your deck, and you're going to be doing cutoffs, this one has a split in it. Yes, it does. So there's a split in this board right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this board, I'm gonna spin it around, so I'm installing the split on the cutoff side, not on my install side. And that'll help to make sure that I don't have a big gap showing up next year that's gonna get wet and stay wet and promote early rot. So we wanna eliminate that problem from happening before we start. And the crown is in the right way. Get rid of my sticker. Now, let's get this flipped around. 
Now this is the advantage of getting boards longer than you're going to use. Now there's a lot of people out there have this misconception that cedar only comes in 16 foot lengths. That's not true. I can get it up to 20 feet. Um, we have a couple of locations in town that have great relationships with mills and get me 20 foot cedar boards. So I can do an 18, 19 foot deck and still just install all my splits and cut them off when I'm done. And that's worth its weight in gold because at the end of the day, the last thing you want to do is build your deck with joints on the joists. That's why we're replacing this deck. The one that was here was cedar and it, they did that. They had short lumber and it caused early rot. It was a disaster. So we're going to avoid that at all costs. Because when we're installing, oh, that's got a bad split and it's already cupping. So it's upside down and it's backwards. Now the reason I like to take my extra time here is the process for actually installing it is just screwing it down. So once I get going with my screws, I don't like to stop and inspect and flip and turn. That's the wrong time to do that because there's usually other people helping you put all the screws in. Someone's going to take the board in the back of the head. Just take time, lay it out, get it pretty much ready to go. Here's an example of a decision that you got to make for yourself. Oh, I'm bleeding. Imagine that. Um, this board right in this position is crowned, down, is crowned up the way we want it. That's the most ideal situation. Unfortunately, it also comes with some bad damage on the edge here in two spots. Probably from some young kid at the store with a forklift, doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Not a big deal. Okay, yeah, it's crowned the wrong way. But, I would rather have it crowned the wrong way than have a nasty ugly spot showing. And because we ordered this on a delivery, I don't have a whole lot of choice. I got to use this board. Because it's so straight, I think it's worth it to put it the wrong way. Reminding myself this, I'll pull the board off the wall like that. Now I know that this is crowned the wrong way. All right. And when I'm installing this, I'm going to use a little construction adhesive on the joist just to help make sure I don't get the buckling. All right, so before we go to deck, we want to make sure that we have our vision for our skirt in place. And that's the area we're closing off underneath the deck. We've got to make sure we don't get animals crawling underneath. We don't want any skunks making a home under here because that would really wreck the atmosphere. So let's talk about options so that you have the ability to make your decision how you want to do yours. First of all, with your first board in place, you should measure off to the wall and find out what kind of a sliver you're going to have left at the house. We're going to be about a half board, which is perfect, so I'm not going to worry about the math. Because either way I move this to make my skirt, I'm going to be fine. If you end up with just a little, little tiny piece, you might consider making some of your gaps just a little bit bigger so that you finish with a full board. But that's another story. Here we go. My first board up against all my posts. I have a three and a half piece of four by four plus the one and a half, that's five inches. These are five quarter by six. They actually end up being about five and an eighth, <laughs> five and a quarter. Boom, there we go. Look at how flush that is. That isn't terrible. That leaves a nice gap on the back side. So if I finish flat like that, now that's easy, right? But how do you finish the deck? If I put any material here, it's going to be in front of the board. So if you use a deck board as a frame, around your whole deck like this, you'll still have enough material down here. You could attach a lattice or you could attach skirt board because skirt board is like a fence board and it's only five eighths. Well, this is inch and a quarter. So it'll have a nice recess. It'll look very clean and you could put vertical skirt board underneath. The other option you got, of course, is to create a nosing at the beginning of the deck. Now, since this is going to be a staircase, I know it takes a little bit more work, but if you were to do the math and set yourself up with a nice stair nosing and then a skirt board, then you've got something to attach your steps to. Everything looks clean and tidy. And then the end result is this nosing is the same as the stair. So then in order to get that set up, we want to measure this off about an inch and a quarter so that after our five eighths, we still have a five eighths overhang. I like five eighths overhang because two of these boards on a traditional riser that you can buy from the store as a pre-made is the same depth as the stair plus five eighths. 
okay? So if you start with a 5 8 after your skirt is on, you'll end up with the same nosing size on every stair. And that's a nice way to finish. It doesn't take a whole lot of math. So 5 8 plus 5 8 is inch and a quarter. So we're just going to take our tape and we're going to measure back inch and a quarter right there. Okay? And then I'm going to measure from here to my deck board that's up against all my posts. All right? And I have a one inch gap. All right. Now I don't want to take off one inch of material because I still need a gap when I'm done. So I want to take off seven eighths. I want to leave an eighth for the expansion contraction so all my joints are consistent. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, there we go. I've got my system in place. I have to notch out seven eighths around every one of these posts. And that's just a really simple way to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my giant triangle here up against my deck. Now, watch this because these corners are all rounded, all right? And the system here with a rounded deck is really quite dangerous. If you flip it around this way, you'll make contact with the solid side and you'll actually make the mark on the right place. Okay, so there we go. Always come backwards and slide up to your post. And when you're cutting, cut the pencil to disappear and you know you're making the right move. Don't worry about making the pencil mark too long. It's not gonna matter. When we're all done, we're gonna come back with the sander anyway. Now the trick here is we wanna make this look like it was built from scratch perfectly, <laughs> which it isn't. We're salvaging the old frame. So every one of these deck, you know, post locations is just a little bit different. So the second one and the fourth one are in contact with the wood. This one and the first one aren't. So there's a little bit of movement. So if we cut all of them exactly the same, we're gonna end up with gaps. So here, instead of seven eighths, I'm going to remove an extra eighth. Boom. I'm gonna go to three quarters on this one. And seven eighths where I'm making contact. It's probably the most important measurement on the entire build. <laughs> Once you get this one done, Everything else should just go nice and smooth because we've organized our wood to be straight and we have our finish all figured out. So this one board, the first one you set on behind your post, once you've got that, that's like your template. All you got to do is make sure everything is gapped consistently after that. You're home free. So we're just going to take our jigsaw here now and we're going to line up our blades so that we're actually eating the pencil. And I want my blade just to the side of the pencil on the outside. So my, I'm actually cutting the hole just a hair bigger than it needs to be. Because I know what's going to happen is this cedar is going to shrink. And all of these gaps, if I make them really tight now, we'll have a nice gap later. So I don't want to leave too much room. Here's the trick for you. When you're cutting back on a, on a curve like this with the jigsaw, you want to just hold your saw a little bit on an angle this way so it's grabbing the wood at the bottom or the blade will tend to bend, okay? And you'll end up with the top will be right on the line but the bottom will be sticking out and it won't fit in the hole. So just a quick visual inspection here. I saw just a spot here where I didn't get deep enough, so I'm gonna just take my X-Acto knife and I'm gonna clean up my edge. Just a note, um, jigsaws don't have a break on them. Make sure the blade stops moving before you set it down and always set it down sideways. Oh, that's a lesson you learn the hard way. So what I'm doing now is I'm setting this board in place so it's not moving around. And I'm using this screw just to mark the middle of my stud, or my joist, sorry. So that after I get all my deck boards in place, it's a lot easier for me to know exactly where I'm going. I don't have it all buried on me. There you go. You want the head just a little bit below the surface. Don't leave it out. It'll look like junk. And what happens is that wood will end up swelling up over time and slowly close that hole over. 
and it'll be perfect. So if you've watched our previous deck videos, you've seen that I'm in love with the camo system. And it's a kind of system that has its own handle and it feeds screws on an angle just below the rounded part on the edge on a 45 degree angle and it pins it down that way. It keeps all the surface free and clear from screws and I love that. But here, because we were saving the old frame, we weren't sure the condition of the wood. And the truth is the top of the wood in a lot of places has experienced a little bit of rot. And as a result, I don't wanna to have to trust the camo screw to hold into soft lumber and keep my boards from warping. So we're going with surface screws on this one just because it's not brand new wood. Uh, that's really the whole thinking behind this. That's why we're going with three inch. When we ordered the material, we were taking into account that the wood on the surface might not be up to snuff and going with three inch just solves all that concern. Now, it's also the cedar screw, the brown one. Here's a note for you. There's two kind of colors of screws in the market where we are, there's green and brown. And generally speaking, pressure treated lumber came in green up until recently. Now they have a brown pressure treated lumber. They still have a green pressure treated lumber. And here's what I'm gonna suggest. I don't care what color your wood is, you buy the brown screw, all right? If you buy green lumber, use the brown screw. It's gonna look stupid for the first year. But for the next 39 years of the deck life, it'll be the same color as that pressure treated lumber once the sun has a chance to get at it for a little while. If you use the green screw, it'll look great for the first year and look stupid for the next 39 years. The people are sticklers about putting the screw in exactly the same spot, one inch off the edge, has to be one inch off the edge. If there's a knot in the wood, one inch off the edge, don't put a screw there, okay? Find somewhere else to put that screw. You have to get outside the rings of that knot, all right? If that knot was right here, I'd be putting my first screw over here because I'm not screwing through a knot. It's guaranteed to crumble and pop on you. And if you have to, let's say you have a knot right where you want to put your screw. What you do is you mimic the camo screw system by drilling backwards underneath the curve until you set your angle that you want and then you can drive your screw. And you can throw a screw in that way and that's a great way to get a screw to hold down the edge, even if you have a knot. Now here we go. You see that pull nice and tight? Now we're gonna be using uh, the saw later to cut off the edge. So it's better if all of your edges are screwed down first, because that'll save you a whole lot of time and you won't have to screw around with it afterwards and risk splitting your wood. So when I started to put in that screw, I could feel the resistance of the knot and it was much further than what was visible there. So the knot's probably gone an angle through the wood. So what I did is I went into reverse and I burned it backwards, pushing down through the wood. Once I cleared the knot, then I drove it in. <laughs> this board is in perfectly straight. We know that because we took time to map it all out. And what I've grabbed here is a board that's not straight to demonstrate how to install it. Now, here's the secret. When you have a board that's tight on both ends and the big gap is in the middle, the, the thing that I've seen a lot of guys do is they'll grab the board like this and they'll pull it. Oh, that's perfect. Put a screw in. But what's not perfect is the ends are still touching wood to wood. <laughs> and it's really difficult to screw that last board exactly where you want it. Because even when you do that, as soon as I start pulling here, it, it doesn't close consistently. And you don't want to just flip the board over because that's not the crown. So we flip the board over, the crown's upside down. And we don't want to do that if we don't have to. So take the time, stand the bad boy up, and flip it over that way. Try not to destroy the house. Now, now that the board's flipped around, I start pulling this tight. You can see I can have it nice and tight here, and then it opens up wide on your end. It's a lot easier to manipulate the end as you go along. So, because our gap is now perfect here, I'm gonna put my square, that's gonna be the gap that I'm using. I'm gonna use my tool to establish my gap on the whole project, okay? And of course, I'm near the end, so I'm gonna burn the screw in. So since we're gonna be putting a lot of pressure on the boards, 
we're going to start screwing at the very end. So what you want to do is you start your screw in the wood, put it on reverse, and push down while going backwards till you get a little bit of smoke. Then you drive it down, and it'll never split on you. Don't ask me to explain the science behind it. I don't know. I just know it works. I learned that trick of all things from an electrician. Carpenter taught him. It's always nice when guys share their, tri their tips and tricks, eh? There's the smoke. If you've ever tried putting screws on the end of a piece of cedar, you know it splits 99 times out of 99. The fact that I just did four in a row means that I can make miracles happen. This is the point where we can put some pressure on this wood and pull it forward. Okay. The secret is if you close the gap too fast, too aggressively at the beginning, you're gonna have all your wood contact with each other. But you should be able to close it just a little bit, every board, till you get to the end. That's one way to straighten a board. There is another way. I'll show you that now. Let's get all of our straight ones out of the way just for the purpose of the demonstration. We'll grab another hockey stick. Oh, that's a beauty. There's a nice gap down there, but halfway it's gone, okay? So let me throw a few screws in this and straighten it out, and I'll come down and show you my other secret. <laughs> the crazy part here is the wood's coming along and it comes back in and then it curves it. Really a lot of fun. So what I gotta do is I gotta get this wide enough now to get this in here. Okay. Push that over where I want it. Whew. Deal with it every joist. So let's say for instance, you're not in the greatest of shape and you don't want to have to really hurt yourself. And you're not alone. Let's say you're building a deck and your lovely wife is joining you and you need some help closing the boards. Here is a great trick. Our gap is only half an inch. It's not that dramatic, right? But you want to put that square in there because I have two points of contact between my wood. All right, and this is why this works so well. And we're going to put this here perpendicular, but we're going to throw a little bit of degree on it, a little bit of an angle, okay? So now my, my force on the board is on the bottom part of the wood when I'm driving it over, and it's as simple as putting that screw into the frame, there we go, and using it as a fulcrum. So I'll set my screw here, and I'll set my screw here, I'll set my screw here. Now ladies, this is something that's awesome. You can do this all by yourself, because you can sit on top of your deck, get it all set up. It's a one-person operation. And you can just lean with your hand, you can throw your shoulder into it, okay? And you close that gap until you're absolutely in love with it. Drive your screw. Don't release the pressure until you get all your screws in. All right, oh, and then let off. And hopefully the surface of your deck won't be that damaged. And this is gonna be a little snug, but it'll come up. You're gonna find that when you do this, this screw is gonna get buried in the wood. And when you go to back it out, it'll most likely come out like this. You don't want to leave this laying around. Set that screw right there on the wood and just push forward. And it'll just pop right off. That way no one ever steps on a screw. And you can use the board over again, over and over and over again. So just remember, the secret here is, the only curve you want to fix is when it's opening away at the end. If you flip it over and it creates a rainbow in front of you, you got the board on backwards. Flip the board around because that's the easy way to manipulate the wood. Trying to close the middle is always a real, real frustration 
and you're never going to get the ends with the gap properly. This way you're guaranteed to have a consistent gap and you only need to have one little three foot piece of wood extra laying around to help you do it. It's a do it yourself trick, but it's a lot more fast if you, it's a lot more fast. It's a, it's a do it yourself -er trick, but it's a lot of fun if you have someone helping you out with that. It makes a deck job go real quick, even if your wood's lousy. So one last quick tip before I let you go and we jump into this deck here. When you're screwing your wood down, ooh, what a lousy piece of wood that is. Set your tip where you want it, all right? And then put your hand on the back of your drill, have some nice downward pressure, and I'll tell you why. Right there, that's perfect, you got lots of control. If you're going single-handed and your drill ever slips off that screw, because you're pushing down so hard with one hand, it'll skip off and put a big hole in your wood. <laughs> like that. You don't want that in your pretty deck. So, instead of pushing really hard with one hand, you can just go and keep, that, keep the contact between the, the drill bit and the screw with your left hand, and then you don't have to push so hard. And even if you slip off, you can catch yourself. All right? That's a great tip for beginners. Just to make sure that you aren't going to punch a bunch of holes in your wood, you'd be surprised how many times you'll slip out of that screw. They're coated, so sometimes the, fill, the head gets filled up with the coating, and it's not quite as tight as you think until you start putting a lot of pressure on it. And then disaster strikes. We are down to our last two deck boards to go in here, and of course the last one is scribed in, it's all specialty detail cuts, and we have an angle, and we want to get underneath the window trim over there, so you'll find that when you get your piece cut and you think you're ready to go, there's just no way to get that wedged in there. So that's why the second to last board, you don't screw in. Now you can use this technique when you're doing flooring of all kinds as well. Cut the board, lay it in so you can have something to measure from, but then go back and install the other piece first. And then you can go back and install this one because this is a lot easier to slide in. Boom. Now it's a matter of screwing them down and we're done. Now I got one more trick for you, Max. Remember we separated all of our boards for good and bad, so these are the, the bad and the ugly. And uh, we're gonna start throwing a screw over here. I'm gonna show you a technique. Now you don't wanna rely on this, but it is effective. And that is you take your screw on a significant angle, get it started, okay? Take your pry bar, and before you screw it down, lift it up, and then just measure what you're doing here. Get about a quarter of that screw through the hole in the bottom until it's in contact with the wood. Now that screw's on an angle contacting that wood with a space. And we all know that when we tighten this up, it's gonna pull the wood closed. Ready? Screwing magic. Okay, so just to recap, because we set our posts inside our frame, our frame is inch and a half. So I've included this, plus I want a one inch overhang, which is the actual thickness of five quarter board. It's amazing how nothing is the same dimension as what it says on the package. Now, we're gonna just go like this, and I've lined it up over there as well. Nothing is really as straight as it should be around here. But I think at the end of the day, when we're all done, it's gonna have a really nice look and no one's gonna really know if there's a little coming and going with the skirt overhang. All right, so I'm just using a fine tooth saw. This is actually a cheat. This is my PVC saw for plumbing, but it comes in so handy with softwood lumber. Now, because this is a knife. There we go. All right, so that pretty much covers everything you need to know for tips and tricks for laying down deck boards. Remember, uh, spacing is important, but more important is being patient and being happy with every piece you install because it's really hard to go back and fix it later if you get irritated after the fact. Okay, so now it's time to go on to handrails and stairs.